Does aging wine really make a difference? Let's find out. Today we're here in my totally uh, secret room in my house um, to age, or really taste some aged wine and see if there's any difference between maybe old stuff and new stuff. Now obviously there is, but I had to bring in a special guest, someone who knows a lot more about wine than me, my friend Tony. Welcome, Tony. He uh, he is a, I'm gonna call him a wine aficionado in my life, um, and definitely in many other people's, and he knows a lot about it. You've seen stuff on the channel with him before. Um, we're gonna open up some wine and yeah. talk about really what, what happens when you age wine. Uh, obviously, there's something different between a 2018 and a 2022 bottle, like that's obvious, but what's the difference? So, let's first talk about, um, I think, you know, when you are buying an older bottle of wine, what are you generally looking for? Like, if, if you're just in the market, obviously you can go and look up things, but is there any sense on the outside of a bottle? Can you look at a bottle and go, it's still good, or should I be concerned? Yeah, so I think the first question that I try and figure out when people come to me and are looking to purchase wine is what is the, what is the purpose of the bottle? Okay. Um, and really it's because, um, you know, wine doesn't necessarily have to be expensive to age. Mm -hmm. um, it just has to be the right bottle of wine um, and it needs to be stored correctly. And ideally, uh, you know, kind of just open at the right time. And, and, you know, when you get something in that Goldilocks period where it's been stored right and it's opened correctly, um, it's, it can be a magical experience. Um, so basically, when you're shopping for wine in general, most everything you see in the market is going to be current vintage wine. Okay. Yeah. Um, rarely do you see back vintage stuff. Mm -hmm. And typically when you see that, there's going to be a premium. Is most of that stuff bought out? Meaning like are all the 1983 bottles of a specific bottle of wine in people's houses right now? Or is there a, a place where people are, you know, is, is there a, a store that is holding on to those things? Yeah. So uh, yes and no. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are back vintages of things that get released and yeah you know particularly from bordeaux there'll be a lot of back vintage stuff that gets released into the market but we don't see a ton of it and, yeah. and typically it's you're going to pay premium yeah. because the nice thing is that you know that it's been stored well mm -hmm. um and so really i think to to kind of get to the heart of the conversation is how do you really store wine yeah um because wine Wine is uh, very sensitive to temperature mm -hmm. um, and sunlight, um, but predominantly temperature and, and uh, fluctuation of temperature. Okay, yeah, so that makes sense. When we're looking for wine um, at the store, just in general, um, there's really not a whole lot to be concerned with in terms of uh, that wine being sound, um, but... Because uh, they're not going to sell a bottle. Obviously, like the people at the shops can correct. know that, hey, this bottle is messed up. What I, I guess what I was asking, we had a conversation earlier about heat damage. Yeah. So so let, let's let's talk about that because this is a rabbit hole I could go down about how to buy wine. <laughs> but um, yeah. really, uh, what are some of the issues that might raise a red flag? That's the first question. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, um, earlier this year, the summer... I lost a bunch of wine, um, I lost several thousand dollars um, in wine mm. uh, due to heat <laughs> damage several thousand. In, in, oh. my, in my home. Um, my air conditioner went out and uh, basically with the circumstances that kind of arose, uh, I had some heat damaged wine. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, not always, you can actually see the damage on a bottle. So I have a heat damaged bottle here that I'm going to uh, show you what to look for. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, this was one of the bottles that I lost, and um, it was the last bottle that I had of this uh, particular wine. Um, this is by a very famous producer, uh, Leroy, here. Um, and this is kind of a desirable bottle. It's not crazy expensive or anything, but it's uh, quite quite wonderful. Um, one of the things you can look for when you're looking at a heat damaged bottle is the foil here. And the foil um, can be a good indication of uh, if the wine is sound or not. The foil should move. 
Hmm. Typically, so okay. you should be able to twist this thing. Oh, interesting. And and so this one actually moves okay, but it's because I was messing with it earlier. <laughs> um, here is a very old bottle of uh, Sonoma Cabernet. 1980. Woo. From 1980. This has been stored perfectly um, all uh -huh. these years. And you notice that this foil still moves with ease. Interesting. Okay. There are exceptions. Some producers in some countries put little things around the neck to help hold it in place. That's a, like a band. Okay. Um, and that will prevent the capsule, the, the uh, foil from moving. Yeah. Um, but that's a different situation. The other thing you want to look for is um, actually leakage. Um, oh. Corks can get pushed out with heat damage. So I'm going to remove this foil so you can see underneath that there's actually going to be wine under this foil. Okay. So let me do that for you real quickly. Yeah. I'm just going to cut the whole thing off so we can see it. Typically when we remove a foil from a bottle of wine, you just cut from the second lip uh -huh. here. But uh, I'm actually just going to cut straight down and remove it so that you can see the damage. Let's see, already we're starting to see some wine mm. you see in here. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. If I remove it, oh, oh there it is. There's all the wine. And I and I actually didn't know that this was heat damaged um, until today. I, I pulled this out and realized that this was one of the bottles that I lost. Um, Interesting. So I was pretty upset about that, actually. <laughs> um, this is a hard bottle to replace. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's you, not the 1980. That's a that's no, no, still, no, yeah. no, no, no. But this is a this is a great bottle of wine. I did, fortunately, I did get to drink one. Yeah. Um, so you'll see that there's wine all around the top here, and uh -huh. this is a bad, bad, bad sign. Um, this is an indication that this bottle's done. Okay. And the other... Oh, you can smell it too. Yep, you can smell it. Yep. And the other indication is the low level here. Yeah. Now, wine will start to lose, um, its fill level over time because yep. of, uh, seepage into the cork. Um... We're not gonna, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to open, open something old today, but um, we can talk about what aging does and, yeah. and how you can kind of experience that. But it, this fill level should not be that low. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the wine around the top there. I, I'll, we can open this too and taste it. That way you know what a heat damaged wine tastes like. I'm, I'm down to do it. So what happens to wine uh -huh. as it ages? Um, wine does not get better this, with So I'll, I'll pause and say, this is, I, I don't know, that the totally parallel to mead, but I think that there is a parallel that mead is along a similar tract. Would you say there's honey? Honey's a little different, uh -huh. but I would say that you can probably get some similar. We're not going to, we don't have like a 1980 bottle of mead. In fact, I was trying to figure out how to get one. I don't even know how to get a bottle that old. Um, so, but my, sorry, just pause to say, I feel like there are parallels here. Uh, I don't have exact characteristic tasting experience to say so. Though. It so wine is unique in that the way that it ages um, is very different than other beverages. Yeah, yeah. Um, so wine, uh, kind of like I mentioned a moment ago, does not necessarily get better with age. Um, it becomes different, and. Mm -hmm. You may not like it. Um, some people don't like old wine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I personally love old wine. Um, I think it's a really unique experience. And um, when they're stored, like I said, when they're stored right, they become pretty magnificent. Mm -hmm. um, can can have the potential. So what happens to wine as it ages? So let's talk about um, red wine first and how what happens to that when it ages. Basically, um, you most, I'm assuming everyone on this channel knows what tannin is. Mm -hmm. um, so red wine has tannin. It also has, has acid and, and other components to um, uh, provide structure yeah. to the wine. Yeah. Um, those things start to change over time. And red wine actually uh, loses color with age. And the tannin starts to fall out. Yep. Um, so you'll have sediment and the tannins become refined. Um, and oxidation is the culprit here. Um, the reason that we have wine development is because, I mean, essentially wine is alive and 
as it ages, it will eventually die. So it feels like a, a someone's made that shirt. A, a wine is a live yeah. shirt, for sure. If not, somebody's getting yeah. it right now. <laughs> um, and, and it loses color, and uh -huh. tannin starts to become very fine. Um, and obviously, the flavors change. Yeah. Uh, when you taste a young wine, for the most part, you're experiencing primary um, flavors of fruit. Yep. Um, this is very general. Um, so there's primary, secondary, and tertiary flavors that can be present in a wine. Interesting. Um, we so, use those for stages of fermentation too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. primary, okay. um, primary flavors are going to be things like red fruit, uh, things that happen strictly by fermentation and no act of the maker. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so no, no added things is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So so fruit, uh, maybe there can be some sort of like spiciness that the grape just mm -hmm. does, right? Uh, secondary hmm. flavors come from um, something that is done during winemaking um, or during the process of uh, d developing the wine. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me redact that. Um, the way that my wine is matured. Okay, yeah. So, basically, if malolactic fermentation takes place, if um, oak is used, those are all secondary flavors. Yes, okay. Um, so, wine can have primary and secondary. Yep. A wine can have primary and tertiary. Okay, what are It doesn't those? have to have secondary. Okay. Right. Um, because that's done post right? right, or during the winemaking process. Okay, so tertiary flavors are things that come with maturation or uh, age. Yeah. And those flavors tend to be more like um, mushroom or hmm. um, leather or, or oh, smoke. Oh, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, They yeah. have more earthy <laughs> characteristics. Yep. Um, those come from tertiary in age and development. Okay. Okay. Uh, so red wine can be quite um, textually kind of crazy yeah. uh, when it ages because it because it does have tannin and um, that changes things. So then white wine it it, it changes as well. Um, white wine can age can age very very well. Um, a lot of people think that white wine is not can't age, but that's not true. Um, and it uh, it actually gains color with age. Color? So, yeah. So red oh. wine loses color with age, and white wine gains color with age. Interesting. Okay. It becomes darker, rather. But I feel like you don't notice the, as much, well, maybe I haven't, as much color difference in reds, because they're generally, I mean, I guess hue. You can see the red hue change. Yeah, so so what happens with oxidation is, and we'll have an opportunity when we taste this dessert wine. It goes a little brown, right? We start to yeah, get a little so more brown a little amber. bit. Uh -huh. And so uh, with, with red wine, we call that color tawny. It becomes uh -huh. a tawny color. Um, and uh, uh, white wine, it, it does have this, I mean, it's a brown yeah. hue to it. Did um, that, so did this heat stricken one, um, would it be effect, can we see Yeah, you'll see, see it. That? You'll actually see it in the wine. Okay. So one, once we get a chance, let me just go ahead and open this thing. Um, once we look at this, you'll actually see there, you can see the heat damage on the bottle. Mm -hmm. it, it, pardon me, um, on the wine itself, because uh -huh. it, it also does affect the color. A yeah, bit. let's see. Let's see. People have been waiting for us to try something. We've. <laughs> um, so white wine um, can age very well. Notably, Chardonnay can age very well. Uh, Riesling is probably one of the most age-worthy whites. Probably one of the most age-worthy wines um, in the world is Riesling. I love Riesling. Um, I love old Riesling. Pinot Noir can age very gracefully. Um, and, man, all sorts of stuff can age very well. Yeah. Um, there aren't many wines, really, that don't age well. Well, let me, let me say that there aren't many great varieties that can't age. Mm -hmm. um, Sauv Blanc doesn't age very well. Pinot Grigio doesn't age well. Um, not to say that they can never. It's just that it just doesn't do as well. So yeah. Just, yeah. Um, so, but for the most part, you know. A good ball, a good ball of wine can age appropriately. So, so we got a heat. This is the heat struck 
Yeah, this is heat one. damage. Heat damage. Um, what we actually. what we call this? I think light struck. I got I got yeah. uh, beer beer in my brain. Hops mm -hmm. on my side. So so what happens is um, uh, you can see the cork is this wine all the way through this thing. Yeah. Um, oh, it's looking plump. And it and it shouldn't look like that at this age. If this wine were, you know, over over ten years old, I would start. I would expect to start seeing wine being pulled through yeah. the top of the cork. Okay. I um, mean that, and that's that's normal. Um, this is not, and you'll see it in the color as well. Well, answer four. It smells okay. Oh, maybe maybe there's life life for this guy. So so that has happened before. Um, Interesting. Red, red, what, red wine can actually hold up. I'm gonna, yeah, red wine can actually hold up to it uh, to heat a little bit better than white. Really, white really can just fall apart. Um, one of the things we look for is the color. It would it. I was expecting this bottle to have. Um, I was expecting this bottle to have um, a brown, tawny color to it, but it actually yeah. looks quite, quite still... good. There's some, very slightly. Lighting in this room is kind of weird, but um, there's some very slightly. But when I smell the wine too, it smells okay. It's actually kind of surprising. So there's there's maybe a chance is what you're saying. So, for yeah, this guy. <laughs> and and it's not to say like if you pick up a bottle of wine or or you um, you know if in this situation like don't ever throw something out just because it looks bad. Um, sometimes you, you'd be amazed. Sometimes uh, things can survive. So now now this I will say this bottle is not perfect. We we do have damage, and this is not something that I would feel confident about. You know, I mean, we might get lucky and the wine might taste great, but uh, mm. looking at it, I can it's compromised. Okay. It's not going to age like it should because of the because of that. Still smells good to me. It smells nice, yeah. Although I'm not I'm not as advanced Actually, of Actually, I a... think we drank one of these. Together. Really? I don't remember. I yeah. think we did. I think I I think I opened it with you. I don't have all the uh, advanced, tech, advanced techniques of tasting that you do, but. So, I can taste it. Um, this isn't showing a lot of heat damage yep. on the palate at all, but you notice it just kind of falls a little flat. Mm -hmm. yeah, acid on this, guys. It's Ooh, wicked acid on it this. It is. <laughs> my, my tongue is <laughs> dried. This is, out. A, this is a very famous uh, yep. producer. Um, uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is red burgundy, but it's, it's Gamay, it's not Pinot Noir. I think so, I may have said this was Pinot, and I don't know why I said that, but this is this is Gamay. So what you're saying here is, well, and I think a good example of this is, obviously we sell some damage to the bottle, potential signs of of whatever of of uh, heat damage. <laughs> heat damage. Yeah. But it's not nearly as I guess aggressive as what the bottle might have shown. So what real, really, really bad heat damage? Yeah. It's. Uh, it's very recognizable. Um, the cork Ooh. will actually push itself out. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it'll actually be shoved out of the bottle. Okay. Um, and sometimes if it's really bad, it can push them all the way out. I've, I've seen that happen before. So, obviously, buying from a store, you're not going to have this issue. Shouldn't gonna, have this they're going to stop you from <laughs> buying something that has that damage, generally speaking, I would say. Uh, but for us, like, as a... Really, if you use store wine, you just have to watch out for some of these things. And yeah, and, and really the kicker here, guys, is um, the, the takeaway. This is a very long conversation that we could we could talk about for a while. But the, the, the key thing here is if the opportunity comes around to buy older wine, yeah. those are the things you need to look for. Okay. Does the capsule look good? Does the cork feel okay? Because it, it, they can get soft uh -huh. um, because of the wine. If they're really soft, like where did this cork go? You can feel how soft that top of that cork mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Um, you know, that's not a good sign. If there's wine, um, you know, under the foil or uh, like running down here. And actually earlier, you can actually squeeze the capsules sometimes. Uh -huh. They'll feel puffy. Wow, interesting. Um, or they'll have like a bevel on top mm -hmm. um, from that. Uh, and smell, smell the top of the okay. bottle. If you're looking at old wines, really anything that's uh, like... Uh, Ten years or, or older. That's where we start to consider it an old bottle. Well, let's let's talk op optimal temperature range of storage then. So obviously, where do you consider what's the upper echelon of 
for the, I would say generally, because obviously you can age wine in different ways, I feel like. Where's the top where you shouldn't be storing most wine? So there's there's one way to store wine. Okay. Um, there's, there's, and I don't know, again, yeah. I don't know anything about this. There's, in this for long-term aging, um, okay. there's, there's one way. Um, in an ideal world. Okay. Is, it, is it room? Are we it, going 40s? Are we... It's uh, 55 degrees is okay. considered the optimal temperature okay. for long-term storage. Okay. If it's too cold, um, the wines uh, won't develop at the rate that they need to. Mm -hmm. If it's too warm, then um, they'll age too quickly. Mm. Um, 55. 55 degrees. For you Celsius people, it's the sunscreen. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that I is. I can't. I'm not going to make trouble <laughs> right now. But, uh, with... And they need to be stored on their sides. Um, they need to be stored laying down. Okay. Like this. Um, and Can you debunk a myth for okay. me yeah. as someone who's stored a lot of wine? There's a lot of... Obviously, you just talked about storing on its side. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who say, if you were to store it upright with a, like a natural cork or something, that it will go bad more quickly. So is there where's what where do we fall on that? Okay, so let me let me give you all the the things that you need about storing wine, okay. and then I'll answer that okay. because okay. I think it might answer your question. Yeah. So the three the, the the three things they need to be stored on their side. They need to be at fifty you know fifty five degrees or a cool room. They need to be dark. Okay. Um, those are really the the three main things that happen or that need to happen. I guess there's a fourth, which is humidity as well. Um, humidity levels need to be need to be relatively high. Mm -hmm. um, so humidity, dark, cool, and on their sides. Okay. In question to storing them upright, there's a little bit of debate about uh, if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. That's a, yep. If things are perfect. If things are perfect, then, um, you know, if the humidity is good, if the temperature's stable because really let's say you have like i can't get this to 55 degrees but you know i can store it in a room at 62 yeah. or i can store it in a in something a fridge at 62 or i don't know whatever yeah. that's better than um letting the temperature fluctuate mm. from 75 to you know 50 mm. up and down in your closet yeah. all through the hall you know yeah yeah the seasons. Um, so consistency really is what matters in terms of like home storage and, and that sort of deal. And, and storing on the sides for the, just well, for the cork? For the cork, yeah. Okay, so what happens when you use synthetic corks that do, don't deteriorate? Okay, so hold, hold that yeah, down. Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So storing the, so to answer your question about whether you need to store the one on its yes. standing up or on the side. So there's a little bit of debate okay. about whether it's completely necessary to store one on its side. Um, the reason is if it's all being stored correctly and the humidity is good, the cork should, in theory, be sound because of humidity levels. Okay. Okay? Yeah. But that's why, why risk it. Like, just throw it on the side. Yeah. Um, I think it's less of an issue with champagne, actually. Mm. Um, I think there is something to be said about humidity levels being really good because a cork actually does, you know, it's a mushroom cork and yeah. it sits on top. Um, and they're really wide and they have a really tight seal. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some, you know, debate about that. I, I, listen, guys, I'm, I, I know what I know from experience and I'm telling you, just throw your one on your side. Yeah. Um, about synthetics, um, theoretically, it shouldn't matter yeah. because they're synthetic yeah. and they're not actually pulling wine through them. They're not giving... Uh, oxygen into the bottle mm -hmm. um, like a, a real cork does mm -hmm. uh, and then with screw caps it also doesn't matter yeah you can store them standing up now I say all this because and and I want to also mention that this is okay to store wine standing up or or not standing up uh, for short periods and most people drink wine pretty quickly after they buy it yeah. This is really t about long-term storage. Yeah. Um, if you buy something and you know you're going to have it for really, my my gauge is like, if I'm going to know I'm going to drink this thing within the year, mm -hmm. I don't get too concerned mm -hmm. with it. It's like, oh, I'll just throw it on my racks. Yeah. 
But um, if I know I'm going to have something longer than that, I definitely want to try to get in the right, right situation. Yep. If I can't do it right away, I try to do it as quickly as I can. Okay. Um, basically, like, you know, I've got stuff on my wine racks that are higher end. Um, and I have other things in my fridges that are higher end. But eventually something comes out yeah. and something goes back in. I know I'm not going to have those wines sitting out for a super long time. Yeah. Um, so it's okay. But, uh, yeah, perfect ideal world. That's where you so, need to So we're here in 55 and on its side. And we have, I have, because of today's sponsor of this video, um, the perfect way you can do that. So let's talk about it. Today's sponsor of the video is Bodega and their own wine fridge. As you can see here, we have this wonderful 18 bottle, 57 can, 24 inch um, Bodega wine fridge. You notice here on the sides, we have wine racks. Wonderful. And individual temperature control for each side. So you can see right here, we're storing some stuff at 44. And this is really a great location for your cans and some wine bottles, depending on your size. The right side here is mostly for your wine bottles themselves. So you can see this, this is nice. And they all pull out as you're, you can store. So that's very helpful. Um, the display, I've used lots of these before, is really nice. You do have a light, as you see, I just turned on and it's blue. It's even fancier. Oh, do you see that? It turns on slowly fades man how fancy is that <laughs> the overall fridge is um a little large i will say that it takes up a, uh, quite a bit of space but your french doors here are very helpful it, it's pretty quiet i have not noticed that it is um obvious when it's on so my biggest problem with this has been its overall size. It's, it's pretty large um, and it doesn't hold as much wine as I would like. These shelves do hold three bottles, but I feel like there's some uh, empty space that could be utilized better. The left side here is supposed to hold a lot of cans and I mean, you can definitely hold cans and maybe adjust some, but I'd like more racks to be able to adjust these things. Overall, not a bad product, but it does have some small quirks to it. If you would like to Control your temps on both sides. It's a great one. You can find a link below. And thanks to Bodega for sponsoring this video. All right, we're gonna talk about some, I have no idea what this is. Magnums, explain this to me, because and to everyone else, I don't know what this is. Yep, so Magnums are, uh, uh, a 1.5 liter of wine. It's a large format bottle. Okay. So it's two bottles of wine okay. is in, in a large format. For anyone, this is a large, very large bottle. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And so sometimes people wonder like why there are magnums, uh, why large formats exist. Big parties, right? Um, big parties, yeah. <laughs> um, but really, uh, magnums are kind of perfect uh, for storage. Um, they're, uh -huh. they're the ideal um, size okay. to store wine uh, because the oxygen in the bottle that already exists in the cork. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're compared to the wine. So this little space up here where there is mm -hmm. oxygen, mm -hmm. this is more oxygen, Ratio. arguably twice as much, twice maybe as much oxygen as there should be. I wouldn't say that. Ratio. I would just say that the ratio is better okay. for magnums. Okay, gotcha. Um, this is a eulage. This is the yeah. um, the gap that you see in there. Yep, yep. And that. Um, that contributes to the development of a wine. Um, if there were no gap, it would develop very, very, very slowly. Um, and they're just, uh, magnums are, are a great way to store wine. Um, they're not easy to find always. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this bottle would be hard to find. You're yeah, hard to buy is, This is bottles. a hard bottle to find. Um, this is a very kind of rare bottle. Um, but uh, yeah, large formats, you know, it, with premium wine, this is... Um, you know, ideal just because yep. of the ratio of wine to um, to oxygen that happens. Also, you know, just the other side of this is like, if you hold on to something for um, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, you know, you have this hope <laughs> that yeah. you that it's done, it's been stored right. Um, and, and also, 
it's just um, it's a wonderful thing when there's just more of it. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. You always want more. Yeah. You always want more. You hate to get like ten years down the road and be like, man, I wish I had another bottle of this thing. The only the only problem with large formats that I will say is they're, they're big and they're hard to store. Um, they're you have to have a place to put them. Yeah. Um, but the issue that you run into with anything bigger than a Magnum, um, three liters. Not so much of a problem, but when you start really getting into the large formats, yeah. the big ones, um, you rarely see those. Uh, they're typically very expensive. Mm -hmm. But when you see those, the only problem you have is storing them on their sides. The weight of the wine can actually push the cork out. Oh, interesting. So you have to be careful. Yeah. And they do age a little wonky. Hmm. They don't age like they should because there's so much wine yeah. um, in those bottles that they... They age very slowly and kind of unevenly yeah, um, to a certain degree. But anyway, that's a bonus little tidbit. A lot so, of people kind of wonder. Yeah, so let's talk about this. So let's say that I, I went and bought out. I spent 10 years sitting on this bottle, and I open it up, um, pour myself a couple glasses. Obviously, I'm not I'm not finishing this bottle myself. I, I could, but it'd be a, a wild night. Yeah. Um, what do I do? Yeah, so, um, so generally, wine becomes very delicate with age. And so when you open something old, you need to drink it. Yeah. Um, it can fall apart very quickly, and, and, mm -hmm. then, and then you're just left with something that doesn't hold up. Um, the corks are very fragile, and the wine's fragile. you got an old man in the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what... We have an example here, by the Yeah, so what, what, what we're going to do is talk about what, how to like preserve wine once you've opened it, because mm -hmm. a lot of times people think that wine is um, very... A lot of people think that wine just yeah. is. A lot of people think that wine doesn't hold up once okay. you open it. Yeah. Like it, it's only going to be good for a day or two, um, you know, a couple days or whatever. Uh -huh. But the problem is that a lot of people don't. Um, once they've opened the bottle, they they just leave it on their counter mm -hmm. or they put it some like somewhere weird by the oven. Yeah, that's a bad place for it. Uh, all you have to do once you open a bottle. Take your cork that you pulled out of the bottle. Okay. Flip it upside down. Put it right back in. Put it right back in and put it in your fridge. Red or white. You'd also mention these things though, I will note, because you mentioned, what are these things? Yeah, let me tell you about those in a minute. Okay. Um, so really, like like I said, sit the cork back in and put it in your refrigerator. Um, okay, yeah. You, you know, that's why. And it doesn't, does it matter if it's like your fridge champ at 40 no, at that point? Keep it in your actual refrigerator. Okay, actual fridge, not not your yeah. like your wine fridge that you have. You can you can put it in your wine fridge, just fine if you can stand them up. But right. obviously, can't lay them down because they'll spill. Yep. But um, yeah, ideally, put them just in your regular fridge because you're okay. gonna drink them pretty quickly. Right. Um. So I think I poured, I think I poured the flowers. Okay. Um. Which is uh. So Chardonnay this kind of works out. This kind of works out. This is a twenty twenty uh, Sonoma. Coast oh, I love the bouquet. Chardonnay. Like the aroma. Yeah. So I'm in mead world still. <laughs> this is this is it's okay. The this the term is still valid. Um, this has been open for like over a week. Really? Okay. Um, yeah, it's been open. I think it's been open over a week now, um, and it still is very 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 fresh. Give me a couple um, uh, words for someone who's you open up a bottle. What are some aromas that it has gone that's going south? What are some so, things you generally get? Yeah, so oxidation is pretty apparent. Okay. Um, and, and you notice you really don't smell a lot of oxidation no, on this. I don't on this. And you can see it in the color too. It'll have some browning, mm -hmm. um, but you don't have really that issue. Right. The reason, so once you open a bottle, there's a couple of caveats that I tell people. If you're going to drink it in a reasonable amount of time, um, what you should or shouldn't do. Um, it's pretty simple. Basically, after you open the bottle, let's say you drink half the bottle, uh -huh. and you're like, I, I don't want any more of this, but maybe you got busy the next day, and you didn't drink it the next day, or two, three days goes by. As long as you have that cork in there, and it's in your fridge and being undisturbed, it should be totally fine. Okay, yeah. Um, you're not going to have, it's never going to hurt you, like the, the you know, this as the wine starts to, die, you know, lose its life. Yeah. Um, but it just, it changes, um, and starts to kind of just fall apart. It just doesn't really have a whole lot of flavor at a certain point. It starts to, to die. Right. Um, this particular wine, um, like I said, it's been open for a week. It also matters the quality level of the wine. Okay. If a wine is really, really high quality, and it, especially if it's a young wine, it should it should taste um, fresher longer. 
yeah. than if you go buy grocery store wine. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking with this one. I'm trying to find, I mean, obviously I'm searching. I'm searching for flaws right now, probably more than things, but. So, I mean, I know this wine very well. Right. Um, I've had this wine a lot. It does just ever so slightly, doesn't have a whole lot of intensity. Mm -hmm. It has a nice flavor. Um, has like that nice golden apple. It is very, yeah. And, but it doesn't have like that zip and pizzazz. Like uh, I would expect a really fresh bottle. Like if we just opened one right now. Yeah. I wish I had another fresh bottle. Um, it's good though. Yeah, and it still tastes great. Yeah. You know, I still feel comfortable drinking this. You know, I, I'm not offended by it at all. Yeah. Um, so that's been open for over a week. This has been open, this other wine, it's also a Chardonnay from California. Um, and these wines are close to the same price point. I think this is about $35, and I think this is about, um, probably about the same. Th okay. $35-ish. Yep. Thirty dollars, somewhere around there. We just do the swish, swish. Yeah, you don't need to. Okay. So this has been open. This is a different style of wine. This has been open um, since Thursday. So it's only okay, been yeah. a couple days. But this is richer. It's got a more. Um, yeah. um, it's a different dark, style. like a almost a, not to say dark fruit because it's not, but it's it's got the. Uh, so you, you can you can smell yeah richness. You can yeah, smell I don't know like how to like describe a, it like the way. Cream. Yeah, yeah. Like butter. I, get, I feel like the, the viscosity body in this is going to be... It's a little bit... Vastly he different. Heavier, yeah. A little oily. A little more oily. Mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, more oak on this wine. Yeah. So Maybe that's part of it, too. Yeah. There's that. You'll also see that... Um, that... This this wine, the flowers is a lot greener okay. style in general than Sanford. Sanford is, uh, like I said, a bit richer. There's a little bit more sugar on the wine. Yep. Oh, I like this more though. I like this. I might be a little bit of that sweetness that's supporting. I felt mm -hmm. like the the flowers had more acidity, and I don't yeah. want to equate. And I want to make sure this is clear. I don't think there's any acid change that comes with oxygenation. Oxidation, no. Oh. The pH will stay the same. Yeah. So you shouldn't experience that. I want to make sure to draw that line because my brain almost put them together. They're not. And these are different wines. Mm -hmm. You know, they're different wines. They're different styles. This has been opened a lot longer. The oak on this um, is fantastic. So, it stylistically, you know, when I if I had to pick between the two, generally speaking, if these are fresh bottles, mm -hmm. obviously, flowers is more my style. Okay. Um, I like leaner wines. I like really acidic wines. Yep. Um, the Sanford is a great bottle. It's just a stylistically n not what I'm always looking for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, time and place. So that's that is um, you know you'd be amazed. I've had I remember there were con there have been times where uh, I have had wine open in my fridge for weeks um, and. They, you know, I'd pull them out and be like, ah, this thing's probably not any good anymore. And, and I'd pull the cork on it and taste it, and it would be great. Um, it wouldn't be perfect, but it would still be very drinkable. Yeah. Um, so yeah. really key here, you know, you spend money on wine. Um, buying quality wine is really important because it will last longer. If you're not a big wine drinker. I love Barefoot, um, though, man. Yeah, I mean, like, there's nothing man, wrong I just, with it. Listen, I, what, Barefoot, they, they sell them in these magnums, right? They do, right? yeah. I, I, don't I, get, think, go. I don't think you'd want to eat that. This is that, not sponsored but... by Barefoot. No. Also, I don't really drink Barefoot. I'm just uh, going to... So, so it, at any rate, like, it, it's kind of a fun experiment to see what happens with a bottle. Yeah. If, you, if you buy a bottle of wine, mm. and uh, if you, especially if you're interested in fine wine. Um, now, my whole world is fine wine. Um, yeah. I, I don't really deal with bulk product at all. And, and so what we're talking about today, right now, this is all premium. This is all, you know, the world of premium wine. Right, yeah. Um, this is not grocery store product. Um, this is not... You can still age those things, though. I mean, can you age... Like, if I'm going to Walmart and I'm buying the $28 bottle of Shiraz by some person, am I still able to age that? Um, Comfortably? I, I mean, that's not really what the wine is intended for. It's not to say yeah. that, that you can't or yeah. that you shouldn't. Sometimes... It just depends, man. It's like... I, I, uh, I have access to so much wine all the time that when I when I do when I personally do buy wine, yeah, um, it is for the intent of storage. Yeah, um, rarely. I think a lot of, a lot of people though are are looking at this going might have a bottle, you know. Right. So, the the thing here is, I think 
at the end of the day, everyone who's probably watching this video right now is interested in these things in some capacity. Yeah. And so um, you don't have to have like, this doesn't have to be a whole expenditure. Uh -huh. um, it really, it's, it's one of those deals that if you're interested in, in, in these things, um, if you're interested in wine, it's a fun experiment. Um, and, and also I'm, I'm a little fearful that when, when, uh, we get into our 50s and 60s that <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of old wine out there that's been stored right because young people really aren't buying wine very much, um, especially, uh, you know, Gen Z really doesn't drink much at all. Yeah. Um, and millennials, you know, uh, buy wine and most of it's consumed within eight hours of purchase. Yeah. Um, I think it's an it's a insane amount. It's like 90% of wine is consumed very quickly after right. it's purchased. Um, and I have wines that uh, I've had now for... Uh, quite a while since I was like probably 22. Yeah. So I've had some wines for a long time and just not ready to open them. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, man, if the opportunity comes up, pull that cork and, and drink it and yeah. enjoy it with somebody. It's but, meant to be enjoyed, you know. Yeah. I feel like, um, without going too deep, because I know that this could get really deep, is there, in your opinion, somewhat of a bell curve in the age of wines as you go, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's a point where it is its best and then it comes Correct. down, right? Correct, yeah. So um, the saying, the old saying is that there's no great wines, there's just great bottles. Mm. And, and what that means is um, in fine wine as things develop in a bottle, uh -huh. there are these micro differences. Right. Um, you know, sometimes when you open something that has had, you know, 20 years of age on it, maybe they're saying, maybe they could even be laying next to each other yeah. in the same cellar and have never been touched. Yeah. You pull one bottle and it's just magnificent. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the other bottle just doesn't show as well. It's shy right. or whatever. Um, there's all these little microcosms that happen. Hmm. And, and also just, uh, you know, you could buy a case of wine, something that you really like now, um, and age it and with the intent of aging it. And, you know, you drink one bottle now and you're like, man, this is a killer. I'm going to hold on to this for a while because I, it has the ability to age. And keep in mind here, not all wine ages. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Not everything's intended. It has to be, yeah, there has to be certain things that go into play. Okay. It's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, you could drink one now and think, man, this is just magnificent. You could drink another one and go, uh, you know, it's shut down right now. It's yeah. not really doing what it's supposed to do. What was showing like it should. Three, four years goes by and you taste a bottle and uh, it's just, it's perfect. It's mm -hmm. exactly what you want. So maybe that's the year that you're like, okay, I've got, you know, eight more of these. I'm going to yeah. drink these in the next, you know, two, three years. Yeah. It's time, you know. Um, you're not going to see a big variance in a year to two years typically yeah. um, with it really dying on mm -hmm. you. The bell curve is a thing. Um, and some wines age quite a bit. Uh, differently than others. Okay. Um, yeah. There's not a straight trajectory just upwards to magnificence. Yeah. Um, there, it, you know, I think you've probably all seen the little thing that's like what you think success is going to look like <laughs> versus yeah. what it really is and it's yeah. like a squiggly line. Yeah. So that's kind of what happens um, to a certain degree. It kind of does do this little up and down mm, thing. Yeah. And typically the style will determine that um, okay. or where the wine is from. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, where the wine's from can, can often tell you. Burgundy, for example, is a, uh, I, I, you've seen me on the channel before. We tasted some Burgundy just now, but, um, Burgundy is, um, you know, what I, one of the things I really love. Yeah. Um, and it, it is very much has a wild aging, mm -hmm. um, period where the wine will just totally die at a certain point and you can kind of depending on the style or depending on you know certain things like i can look at a bottle and go okay well you know based on this vintage and how long it's been aged and you know all these factors this wine is probably going to be shut down right now mm, okay. um and i can't touch this thing for another five years interesting okay uh, because it's not going to be very good yeah you know in that moment it's not gonna be bad it's just not gonna show like it should um and then always surprises man i mean yeah. you know I, I showed you this 1980 Estancia. This is a grocery store wine now. Um, you can buy this at the grocery store. Not this vintage, obviously, but mm -hmm. you could you could buy Estancia at a grocery store, I believe. And you know, back in the '80s in California, wine was very different. Um, yeah. The wine, the way wine was made, was very very different. 
I drank a bottle of this um, two, three weeks ago. Okay. And it was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I would not have thought that this little bottle would have held up, but it was stored perfectly. Same owner. Yeah. For many, many, many years. And um, yeah, I shared this and something else that was an 84, uh, you know, Rutherford Hill wine. Those wines, these wines probably on release in the 80s was yeah. five bucks, six bucks maybe. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, and they're not crazy expensive now, but um, you know, they were stored right, they were made well um, and taken care of and they drink, they're not gonna blow your mind, yeah. but they're delicious. Um, so there's that. So the other the other thing about- yeah, I was gonna say, let's let's get into my territory. I feel like we've we've lived in your world. What do we got that's closer to me? Yeah, so the other thing that um, happens with opening a bottle, I kind of I mentioned this to you, opening a bottle and like having drinking it uh -huh. for a while, you'll see like waxes and wanes. And sometimes, you know, really high quality wines, um, I feel that they, they're better the next day. Yeah. You know, you have oxy oxygen coming and breaking that wine down yeah. and it starts to really shed that baby fat yeah. um, and can, can show itself. Sometimes even day two, yeah. it's even better. Yeah. Um, and then eventually it just starts to go on you. Yeah. Uh, what we have here is a dessert wine. Mm. And so with that, um, with the Linda oxidation Constance. that's happening, once you have a bottle open, you can get a glimmer of what the wine will do with age. Yeah. The longer you can push a wine to have um, uh, open, once it's open, if you can, if you can if you can open a bottle and drink on it for three days, four days, a week, two weeks, yeah. and you're going, man, I can still drink this thing. Like this is still good. I, yep. you know, there's flaws now uh -huh. because it's been open. That's a really good indication of how long that wine will age. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quality. So the longer, yes, quality level. The higher quality of the wine. Hmm. The the durable more. The, yeah. I, I, guess, I don't know. Yeah. Term. Kinda, it has, it's more elastic. Yeah. You know, in a sense. Huh. Uh, if it, if it, if you can if you can open a bottle and drink on it for several days, the more you can do that, the longer you can push a bottle to the point that it's not gross. You that know? sounds like a whole YouTube channel. You just open up bottles of wine and you just like say day one, you go and taste yeah. it. You know, that could be interesting. If you if you want to have an experience like this, a very yeah. simple thing to do wow. is go to the grocery store. Or go, go, go to a wine shop, preferably yeah. stop. If you're buying wine at the grocery store, stop doing yeah. that. Um, go, go, to a, go to a wine shop. Somebody's commenting right now. I, I'm about. sure. Go to a wine shop, pick out a, you know, the, a cheap bottle of wine. Can be, barefoot? Can be anything. It can be barefoot. It could be, uh, you know, Winking Owl. Um, pick, I don't know what pick, that one is. Yeah, it's an Aldi brand. Pick, pick something out. Um, oh, that you're is you're just, an Aldi guy. You're not an Aldi guy? Uh, I Aldi. Know. I haven't thought about Aldi. Aldi. Oh. Aldi. I think I say Aldi, Aldi organic. Let me know below if you're still yeah. watching. Uh, you're an Aldi or an Aldi guy. <laughs> how old is this one? I'm, I am curious though. Yeah, this is uh, 2015. Well, no, I mean, how long has it been open? Sorry. Rephrase. Oh, so, yeah, actually, this, so this will yeah. segue into that. But you can take a cheap bottle of wine, open it, taste it. Yeah. Probably, I mean, you might like it, whatever. Um, put, put it, you know, put the cork in or a scoop yeah. cap back on and put it in the fridge. Do the same thing with something that is um, premium. Okay. Um, doesn't have to be crazy expensive. Just yeah. I don't know, twenty bucks. Yeah. Thirty bucks. And do do the same thing. Do them on the same day, and then taste them each day. Okay. Yeah. Um, quickly, you'll find that the the less expensive wine is just falling apart. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a whole that's a whole thing. Okay. So what's this one? So this is Klein Cassantia. This is a pretty famous wine. Natural um, sweet wine. Yeah, so um, this is a really cool bottle. And let me show you. When people say natural sweet wine, are they capping out yeast? What's going on there? Do you know? I'm not really quite sure why they use that. Because they're, they're not back sweetening. No, 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 no. This is a dessert wine from South Africa. Okay. Um, pretty expensive. Uh, I think this retails somewhere in the ballpark of about 100 bucks. For a, 500, for a 500 milliliter. Um, All right. This is a pretty unique wine in that um, there's not a lot of South African dessert wines, but um, there is a, a fungus that actually grows on the grapes um, mm -hmm. that concentrates those sugars and okay. um, kind of dries the grapes out a little bit, uh, and that creates um, a concentration of flavors and sugars. Interesting, okay. Um, 
this is considered one of the greatest dessert wines in the world. Um, <laughs> not the. Yeah, yeah. The, the, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, but one, one of them. One of them. Still cool. Yeah. Still great title. The, have. The, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the, um, the greatest dessert wine in the world, and often called the greatest wine in the world, is uh, Chateau Yu Kim. Um, I've, I've actually never had it. Um, I've had a couple opportunities, and it's just never really came up, but uh, that's a Bordeaux, and it's made um, very similar style. Okay, um, yeah. But this one has been open for a while, um, and you asked me about this little blue thing. Yep. Um, so these things are great. Uh, I, I I don't remember who told me about them. It was um, came up in conversation one day, and I mentioned it to a buddy of mine who's a master sommelier, and he was like, dude, no, those things are awesome. You should give them a try. And uh, they work very well. So what they are, I have a new one I'll give you one so you can test it out. There's a, um, they're, re they're reusable to a certain degree, but they are really meant to be disposed of. Okay. Um, there's a little foil under the cap here, and this is what goes into the bottle. Yep, like that. yep. There's a little foil that you peel that off, and you stick it in an open bottle. And there is, the, I think the way I understand it, Inside of this little capsule um, is, a, I think, like a mineral or something. I don't know exactly what it is. Okay. Um, it says on their website that consumes oxygen. Oh, interesting. And okay. so you don't pump this thing or you don't right. do really anything. You just put it in, and it'll feel a little loose when you put it in. Um, it might. And then you give it a few minutes, and I mean, at that point, you just stick it in your fridge. Yeah, yeah. But if you give it a few minutes, it'll create a suction. Okay. And you can actually, um, you That's can wild. feel, it'll get tight and it'll yeah. actually pull, pull itself down. Yeah, you down can see like on it where it. it's pulled. Mm -hmm. it's... So it kind of just, it's very slight, but it, uh -huh. it pulls itself down to the cork and um, consumes the oxygen left in the bottle. That's cool. It's called Repor? It's called Repor. Um, they're not super expensive. I want to say they're maybe like a dollar oh. each or so, but. If I can find a link, I'll put a one. Yeah, on you can go on Amazon. Yeah. Um, if, if, you, if you use these things wisely, um, you can get pretty good life out of a bottle, especially when you have high-end stuff. Um, and oftentimes, uh, you know, the nice thing is like this is um, a sweet wine, so it just or it just has a preservative, you yeah, know, that sugar. Um, but you'll see this has been up in a little Ooh, while. The color, yeah. Whoa, this is a pretty magnificent bottle of wine. I mean, I'll tell you what, y'all. Look at that. That it, is beautiful. Ideally, that ideally these little guys. If you if you follow the instructions on them, obviously I'm not following the instructions. Ooh. I'll probably throw this one away. This little um, this little report today. This smells but um, if you follow the instructions, they work great. Um, they they really do a good oh, job. Almost and they're good. they're pretty affordable, especially when you're opening something that's kind of nice. Like if you know you're not going to drink it again for two three days, um, or or longer. Maybe you're not going to drink on it for a couple weeks. Yeah, you just not a big wine drinker. They work great. You can use them. You could also use them for me. You can use them for anything. Yeah. I mean, um, it's all the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, this thing smells fantastic, man. Yeah, man. So, Klein Constancia, they, um, they are one of the, they are, I mean, kind of the first uh, winery um, in South Africa. Okay. Um, they, they were established in uh, 1685, 16, 1685. Yeah. That's what it says on the label. Um, and, they're famous really for this dessert wine, um, yep. but they make uh, they make dry wines. They make a lot of different wines. I'd like to go there. My boss is gonna be there. Um, he's gonna go. Um, cool, cool. Next year, so pretty exciting. So this this bottle with the repour has been opened several months. Okay, yeah. Several months, um, and and this bottle has changed a little bit over time. It's, yeah, it's open, um, but it's been open since the summer, some point. Um, wow. But I think the repour does a great job. Um, yeah, since the summer, dang. Oh man, that's the, there's so much um, thickness because of the, so much residual sugar is there. That is such a tell. So, you'll notice, it's still texturally, mm -hmm. it's pretty dense. Yeah. But it's, um, you know, this bottle's been over a little while, it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but the um, there's still really, you don't realize how acidic this wine oh, is. Oh yeah. Yep. You, you don't know because the sugar is so high. Mm -hmm. It moves though. And I think that's the kicker with dessert wines and sweet wines is like, they're hard to make. Yeah. And if you're going to do them, uh, if you're going to buy them, you should buy good ones because they are 
just that much better. Um, the acidity levels really matter. That's a big thing in Mead World is is mm -hmm. balancing your obviously acid, uh, tannin, and sweetness, and then those two. You know, the the one of the best mead makers in the world, or well known, I guess, um, is Ken Tram. Mm -hmm. You know, and he he makes extremely sweet wines or meads, excuse me, that are high acid, and yeah. that's he balances them well, and that's what it that's what it takes. And you know, this this little guy is really meant to be consumed with. You know, probably more than more than two people for a whole bottle. I don't know. Um, Sounds like a challenge. I I think personally mm. that for a hundred dollars, this is a steal. Yeah, it is. It is a absolutely incredible bottle of wine. It is. If you can get your hands on it. Um, and the reason we're tasting this is because this is a wine that would age magnificently. Um, and so what we're tasting right now. Having been open for as long as it has, yeah. you're starting to see what the wine will do. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you can feel the, a little bit of oxidation, that big, those big golden flavors. Yeah. Um, and there's still some delicacy to it. Um, yeah. But that's what, that's what happens when you... So, so what I'm, I'm gathering from a lot of this conversation is, um, you know, we, we obviously fear oxygen post-fermentation a lot of the time. But you can also use oxygen as a tool... Mm. And when you wield it well, whenever you are, or when you are trying to um, extract more flavor profiles from a wine or sweet wine, which probably closer to mead, you know, I think, um, I, I think what I'm trying to say is oxygen is not the devil. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and oftentimes in winemaking, it's used. Um, yeah. You know, there's... Uh, reductive winemaking, yeah. which is minimal oxygen or yeah. no oxygen, you know, through the process. And then there's wines that are oxidative. Yeah. Um, and that is a style of wine. It's, yeah. You don't have to like it. Yeah. Um, but it can be used. Well, Tony, I want to finish off. I, I feel like it'd be kind of fun to, to dip our toes back in my world a little bit. You've had this before. I don't know if you've had a 2018 version, though. Mm -mm. This is my peppermint mead. This video will be out a little bit before... Season. Christmas. So, 2018 bottle of this, aged for maybe about four and a half years. I don't remember exactly how early I made this one. But I want you to just go ahead, rip it up, let me know what you think. I think this was literally the first time I made this. Made this really? Brew. Let's try and find something old for today. What do you I mean, get it's, from it? It's funny, like, going from what we just tasted to this, because... Yeah. Well, I wanted to finish so with this because it's peppermint. I was like, I feel like that'll just yeah. kill. Yeah, it would. kill the palate if we. <laughs> it it feels a little thin. Mm -hmm. Not oaked or anything like that. Mm -mm. And this is pre me really adjusting tannin too. I did a little bit more, I think, in my uh, ultimate recipe. It feels, feels like new, like a little like um, diluted. Yeah, just yeah, a little so. bit. Um, yep. Flavors are all there, and the um, I think the peppermint's a little strong. Yeah, I think so. I think, but I don't know. Do you want it to be like? You, I guess you want more honey. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, I think I would. Okay. I think I would. That makes sense. That. I this has come a long way since the first time we made it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still have. Like, like I said, mm -hmm. I still have that bottle. But um, I do think this is aging well. I think the the recipe itself needed adjustment, but I feel like the overall value of it is mm -hmm. it is aged well. You know. For four years, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I would have expected it to have really just died yeah. a lot more than it has. I think this recipe needs age. That's one thing. When I, when I tell people to make it, you need, it needs probably a year for it to mellow. Otherwise, mm. it's really, the peppermint, it's even brighter. Mm. <laughs> Imagine, it's like peppermint candy. Mm -hmm. So letting the honey kind of come in to the plate. Yeah. So No, I, I think it's good. Um, it does, I think now, I'm trying to recollect the last uh -huh. time you know I had it, but I feel like the peppermint comes through, and the last time I had it, it feels more in balance, but also like, it doesn't feel like candy, mm -hmm. per se. Yeah. Uh, this feels like that candy film mm -hmm. kind of thing, yeah. which is not very apparent, but it's just, eh, it's like in the back of the throat, just yeah. so slightly. Um, but it's it's not bad at all. It's kind of actually, it's kind of interesting um, seeing, seeing um, this again. And it was clear before I moved it. I picked it up and it, we had a lot of that um, a lot of stuff filter down. Yeah. Settle, so. 
I will say, like, you know, and, and two, it, for, kind of in reference to you mentioning aging stuff, 750s would be the better option. Yeah. Th 375s are a little, uh, little, uh, little too small sometimes for a long, long term. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony, I appreciate this conversation. I hope that people who have watched this have gleaned something from it. I have definitely gleaned a lot of things. I, I don't consider myself anything close to a wine expert by any means. So this is um, eye-opening for me. So I hope you uh, have appreciated the insight that Tony's given us. Of course, there's a lot of uh, people who know about wine, but for my world, Tony is kind of my guy. So um, if you would like to talk to Tony, ask questions, I can... Uh, send a put an email or something below yeah, and he, he can answer some questions if you have them yeah. um, but thank you for watching i know it's been a longer video but this has been uh, again very insightful for me so and thanks for having me get on the channel so yeah it's always a uh, well fun. i'll tell you the next thing i think we'll do is i've got a bunch of um, old beers eight or nine okay. year old prairie stouts that okay. uh, need a, a diagnosis i have some old beer too so well uh, maybe we'll do an old beer uh, episode okay. let me know if you like this this was a lot of fun and uh I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Cheers.